pigeons. Now you don't normally see them as inspiration for beautiful elegant watercolours that I know we're all going to pull off this morning, but I thought they were pretty beautiful. Um, everyone's going to moan at me now, I'm going to get loads of messages about how they're rats with wings, but we're going to ignore that. So if you look at the pigeons, uh, they're quite gorgeous with the um, pattern, the feather patterns really are very beautiful natural organic patterns quite gorgeous to work on and the other thing that you've got here so you've got this lovely tone of grey a bluey grey it reminds me of um that's lifting up and down so that you can see light hitting a three-dimensional contour and you get this pink into a beautiful kind of turquoise blue with these lovely piercing orange eyes really beautiful um with the color ranges very delicate and soft but a quite stunning when you try and paint this you're going to realize what I mean at this point you're going to think I've probably just lost my marbles but we'll go with that as that's a normal state really with me now to start off with we've got to do a drawing before we go into the watercolors I've got my HB pencil that I've sharpened up and I'm going to start working this out now you might find it easy if you put some guidelines into this just to get an idea of, of kind of proportions first of all if you look at this head and how far it comes out from the chest so you can see that indentation keep an eye on that because the cheek is roughly in line with the way the chest comes out so that's going to be an important one now if you look at the height uh, in relationship to the width there's not much in it because of the way you've got two pigeons interacting so do allow a decent amount of space I nearly fell off the, the right hand side of my piece of paper with this um, I had to shimmy everything over a little bit with this. This is actually quite long, this wing. So give yourself a little bit of extra leeway. Now, I am working on A5 paper, A5 watercolour paper. It's 300 GSM. I've just taped down because I'm doing the drawing at this stage. Um, and then I've got my reference image here by um, Ashy Forth from Pexels, which is royalty free. A brilliant site. Do check it out. Now the other thing you have to be aware of that this head is leaning in and that you've got this kind of curve of a lean here. You've got a little bit of a curve coming down here. Look at the relationship of the legs. This leg is sitting directly underneath this bird's eye. This one should be past the head. So it can help us with the measurements and check that the proportions are right. With this I'm going to turn them into stick birds to get things right. You'll see with the next project, the Kingfisher, that I do it a little bit differently. It's just showing you that there's no perfect way to draw. It's about what you find happy and easy to use. So, I'm working with a HB pencil because I personally like HB. It's not too hard, it's not too soft. I call it a Goldilocks pencil for all my students who know me. And I'm going to be holding it towards the end. By holding any pencil towards the end, it means you haven't got any downward pressure and your lines will be a lot softer therefore easier to rub out. Now to start off with, I'm gonna put in like a rough line to give me the position of the head. Your eye, when you're working on a reference image or any form of observational drawing, should be 70% on the reference or the, the object and 30% on the piece of paper. So try and keep your eye on this while your hand is moving. That will increase your hand and eye coordination and make you a much better drawer. At that point, so I've got that head in here, now I've got this head just coming in over here. Then I've got the body mass, which is roughly coming over here. Okay, um, and then with this one, so I know that that wing gives me in line of that. Again, the body's slightly sloping down and it, it kind of into that one so I've got my little kind of heads up here and my head around here so you can see there if I go a bit darker my head's a little bit longer I've got to look at the connection of the beak linking to this one so I've got my neck coming over here my neck coming over there my body shape roughly like so body shape for this one because I can see my tail coming down here like so and then now I can know that it's going to fit my piece of paper now you can see I'm a little bit long I reckon that's going to be the end from my measurements of 
that way and obviously this tail is slightly short so that means it should come in and fit quite nicely so now i've got roughly my stick pigeons so it looks like a lollipops basically on some wonky kite like shapes then we can still build them up so with this one i'm going to start building up the head and the neck coming in like this now immediately you see i've slid my hand down the pencil a bit further I'm going to get that down and that's going to come into the leg and the leg is at an angle, see that angle coming down, so you're getting the thigh and then I've got my leg just sticking out over here and then I've got my other leg and I look at this negative space, just a little bit more straighter, coming around like that. Then I've got this one, so the body is coming in coming up and round I got my wing arch coming in like so that is going to come up curved uh, and I've got this lovely look at that curve the head is reaching up in your hair in the chin point out so you get that I think my head's going to end up being a bit too high I might need to bring that down a bit okay uh, and then I'm going to work this head up over here, coming in, and I get the curve of the neck coming into the back. Now, down here, I've got my legs roughly kind of coming around that side. This one's sitting quite close in. And the feet, look at those feet, they're arching up, it's like, feed me. I'm guessing it's like, uh, parent and child that you've got going on uh, and let's look at the tail so we've got this bit here poking out coming down there then we've got the tail of the bird sitting behind just poking out there and we've got another bit poking down there that might be a little bit far out so let's bring that in when we've got the wing coming in here, drifting up, that's arching in there. Now I'm generally drawing a lot of this by eye now because I've just got the bare bones in. And I can get the beak up here. I get that one's beak sitting in here. And that leads up into the eye socket, comes out down into the jaw and into the neck like so that one's reaching up the head goes a little bit higher and then it flattens down and you get this eye popping out here comes down and then we start really sketching in everything else so I can I can wipe that wing in there um, I can start looking at checking that's where that goes in there that goes up here you get a little bit more of a wing and a body shape just tucking into that and then those feathers hook around there um, and let's get that curve of pattern going in like so we've got an arch coming up round there and you can just hear me thinking this way while I'm drawing I want that day. Um, in my head counting the number of feathers, checking the double spacing. Uh, so I'm just whacking in these lines. Now because this is going to be a watercolour sketch I don't worry too much about perfection. Obviously if it's going to be really something quite nice I would be calculating this a lot more. But you can see... I can just kind of snap them in, get that up like that, and keeping things fairly simple. Putting that leg down there. And I've got some feathers and a belly. Belly going up. sophisticated curve that comes down 
into f8. And hey presto, you should end up with some pigeons just like that. I'm going to take my putty rubber and clean up my guidelines because obviously I don't want my lollipop sticks I was using to calculate the head positions to be there sticking through my beautiful colour mixing in watercolour. Using a putty rubber will be much more delicate on the paper and mean that when you're mixing your colours you should not end up with too many problems because like a traditional rubber breaks down the paper fiber a bit heavily and it can mean you get some pooling of colors and, and some various effects that you really don't want especially if you're doing quite a fine piece of um, artwork now it is important to remove any guidelines because watercolors are a translucent medium that means that when you lay on the colors they're a little bit like stained glass, you'll see through them and um, any pencil lines you will not be able to remove. So make sure you're happy any lines that you've got down because um, once they're down and you put a colour over the top, you're pretty much condemned. Ah, not perfect, but it gives you a, a rough calculation of where things should be. Uh, now if you wanted to do it really well you'd come round with a pencil like I'm doing at this stage and you would refine it so it is a nice detailed accurate drawing. You would take the putty rubber just from over there and remove any really thick lines you want. Just a nice crisp thin line drawing. Ultimately that is the name of the game when working with watercolours. Uh, so I'm just and I'll whack this in a little bit more. Okay, and that should that'll be good enough. That'll be good enough for what we're doing. We're only working quick, aren't we? So hey ho, who cares? Now what you're gonna need next is obviously a palette. Oh, I have my palette there. You're also going to need two containers of water. You can see that I have one container of water all ready to go up there to my left of my pigeons. And because I'm working on a desk, it's slightly tilted. It means I have to glue everything down, which is what I'm trying to work on at the moment. But the bottle is too wet. Right, there you go. And I've got another container of water there. And this container is going to be for my colour mixing and keeping my brushes clean. Do try and keep this water fairly clean. As soon as it starts getting dirty you need to go and replenish it because it will cross contaminate all your colour mixing. This water over here is for using onto the surface of the paper, keeping it nice and clean and then feeding colours into it. So try not to dip your dirty brush into this one. Now it's easier said than done because you do get into a bit of a habit when you're painting and it's easy to forget. Hey, the amount of students and that I've done is when you clean your brush in your own cup of tea. So do keep that in mind. All right, now with watercolors, you're looking at working from light to dark. First of all, you need to think about your brushes that you're using. I quite like a synthetic head. Obviously, a lot of watercolor brushes will be natural hair. Natural hair is very expensive. But the idea is with natural hair, it holds more water and more paint. So you get a longer brush mark. The synthetics are pretty good these days, so you can get away with it. You do not need to be paying a lot of money for brushes to do watercolours, so do keep that in mind. But you do want some different head sizes and different shapes. You can see here I've got the two fundamentals. To my left is a pointed head brush. This is used for feeding in detailed lines, flicks, certain marks. To my right, I've got a flat-headed brush. Some call it chisel, there's all different names for it. This is ultimately for putting down a lot of colour fairly, fairly quickly and nice and flat. So it really depends on what area you're working on and how much paint you want to go down to which brush you should be using. With this, you need to always have a plan. Well, with watercolours, you always need to have a plan because once you put down that colour, you're, you're pretty much condemned to where it's going to stay. You can lift it off in the early stages while it's wet, but once it dries, that's it. So, working light to dark. First of all, my lightest points are going to be over this nose, which is white. I'm going to leave the paper white. 
Some people like using masking fluid for that. I'm quite happy to paint around it. It doesn't look that complex a shape. Then as you come down, you've got all these tones of greys. So we're going to be working greys in the early stages. Very soft, mild. It's a little bit baby bluey to my liking. So I might add that in. You can see blue here. Remember grey, it's bouncing light off and reflecting things that's going on in the surroundings. You've also got a lovely soft pink for the feet. Now I'm going to take that pink and I'll probably mirror it up here, which will be rather nice. And then I've got this turquoise, which is lovely. It will work for other things. Obviously the orange to the eyes as well. So, to get started off with, while I'm thinking, and I always end up sewing on camera when I'm doing that, I'm going to grab a little bit of water. I'm then going to make a neutral tin, which is really good for a grey tone. Rather than using black, which can be a little bit flat, a neutral tin will give you a little bit more of a tonal depth. So you take some crimson, as you can see I've done here, then you add in a little bit of your ultramarine blue to make a lovely pretty lilac. And you, you kind of want a really bluey lilac shade, not a plummy purple. That should help you calculate how far you're mixing your blue in. Once you're happy with that, then you grab a little bit of cadmium. Oh, way too much cadmium. Not a problem. You can see it goes a little bit brown. That means I need to increase the blue content. It's going a little bit green, so I'm going to up a tiny bit of red into that. And then I'm going to rebalance a little bit more blue. This shows you how complex colour mixing can be but it will give you a really good foundation. And this one, because it's got so much blue in it, and you know how I was saying in that early stage, it's got that baby blue, it should yield some lovely results. That looks pretty good. If in doubt, have a spare piece of paper and do a splodge. It's not bad. Now, I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna dilute with a little bit of water to make it very mild. And I'm going to start coming in. I'll do a little bit on his head. Oh, see, already I've painted into that nose I said to leave. Yeah, just blot that out with a little bit of tissue. Bring my lines in. And then start working this down. Now, I am going to be very careful about that area that I want greeny blue. I'm not going to work it out. I'm going to take my brush, take off the excess water, and just smooth it out into the white of the paper. Then I'm going to blot it up, and again, smooth it out. That's very mild. And you can see you get a nice soft transition. Uh, I'm going to Move that out around the eye using again just a clean wet brush. And I'm going to take the nose off again. And then I'm going to work down onto the chest. And onto that beak. So, and then I feel like it's a little bit blue, like I said to you. Nope, I've got that neutral tint sitting underneath. So that's going to cause everything to go a little bit grey that I sit on top. Because remember, like I said, they're translucent in nature. I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue, diluted it down. And I'm going to start just working a little bit of blue on top of my neutral tint. Very mild, gentle blue. You can see I end up with lots of blue pigeons otherwise here, if not careful. Okay, Maybe you can see it's getting a little bit more of a bluey twang to it now. I'm going to grab a little bit of crimson and just dilute it down for a soft pink leg tone. Now, 
all over that pink and it's just kind of starting to blend into the blue I'm going to bring in a little bit of pink on the collar you can see that You're using that brush to work it out into the shade quite heavily diluted and kept fairly mild in tone and it looks like there's a light slight pink as well down here with the wings I bring a little bit down here on top of it it's got to be that the light is bouncing off like so now let's grab some of that turquoise with the turquoise, what you're ultimately looking at is like a, a lemon yellow and a cerulean if you haven't pre, well, if you haven't pre got the colour. Right, so I've mixed in a little bit of cerulean with some lemon yellow and you should get a little bit more of a kind of turquoisey blue. It depends on how much blue you want to balance out into the green. That looks pretty good. It's a tad strong. Um, I dilute it down and then start padding that in and you can see how strong that is let's take that out and just carefully blot off the excess clean my brush use a little bit of clean water just to powder puff it in Now, I'm taking a moment and I'm just going to look over and I can see I've got a few hard edges. Some, some water colour artists like that, other people don't. I personally prefer just getting a clean wet brush and blending them out so that it gets a smooth transition rather than it being so crisp and hard edged. But it is just personal preference, there's no hard posture rule, it's art at the end of the day. You can usually get away with again a little bit more of that baby blue because you know, like I said, what colours are all about being transparent and putting a shadow on this pigeon here to throw this pigeon forward. And whack it down the bird. You could use a neutral tint if you wanted to, that would be even stronger. I might find that in here if you get that shadow. From the wing, um, I'm going to just increase my neutral tint because it's got a little bit of water. It's got so watered down that after a while it's not as strong as it needs to be to give you that strong dark shadows. So you will find that you have to constantly remix to get the strength back up into the pigment. Right, I'm going to just work a little bit more of a darker tone on the neck. So I'm going to up the shadow work on there a little bit more. Uh, making that neutral tint and playing around with it a little bit more. Because it just seems a little bit light on mine. Okay. There you go. Fun little quirky mini study of some pigeons. I hope you had fun and you do a few more studies. The more you do, the better you get. See you next time. Bye everyone.